the people to change. And that's the name of the game. If you don't change, okay, you're going to use again. Sooner or later, you will use again. Consequences. Never make somebody like me stop entirely. The only thing consequences ever did to me was slow me down. Never made me stop entirely. Now, to get people to change, you have to get people to get some different ideas up here. Now, to get an idea out of this man, into that man, because that's what changes people's lives are ideas. Problem with ideas are you have to transfer one idea to this man to that man through words. A lot of times y'all get the word, but you don't get the idea. I'll give you an example. I mean, y'all been to treatment with us two or three times already. You get the words, we tell you an obsession and allergy. You get the words, but do you get the idea? Then the problem with ideas to get it out of this mind into that mind. You have to use words to change to get ideas from one mind to the next. Again, a lot of times y'all get the words, but you don't get the idea. Now, there's three things we're going to get across to you while you're in here, maybe. It's going to depend on you. We're going to try to tell you the problem when it comes to your using, the solution to the problem, then we're going to give you a plan of action that you can take that will get you out of the problem into. Now, if you take those three pieces to the puzzle, problem, solution, plan of action, if you apply those three pieces to any problem, you can solve that problem. Now, what kind of car do you drive? Just pick one. Huh? Trust me. That's what you would pick? Okay. Let's say you want to have to get in your truck, okay? And you hit the key, and it went. Click, 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 click. What would you have? problem right now if it's just clicking nine times out of ten it's probably gonna be what the battery now if you went and changed the windshield wipers could you go anywhere now if you step back and you actually diagnose the problem i have a bad battery as soon as you understand the problem does the solution fall in your lap? Which is a what? And a plan of go to AutoZone and get one of the bitches. Now, everything hinged on you understanding the problem. Now, if you change the battery, get the key, it start. Yeah, and would the windshield wipers work then? How many of y'all keep changing windshield wipers when you actually have a bad battery and you never go anywhere? You take two or three steps forward and then you take about 10 back. You regroup a little bit, you take five or six forward, then 20 back. And in your little narrow mind, all you can see is the couple of steps you keep taking forward. But if you add this shit up, your ass is going backwards. And everybody can see it except you. Now, I want you to put everything up. Pens, pencils, I don't want you writing nothing. I want you to do something that's real unique for you. That is to listen. Now, God gave you the same thing he gave me, two ears and one mouth. There's a reason why. 
He wants me to do more. Listen in the end. Talk. Now, if you show me an alcoholic untreated, I will show you someone who's tried buku solution to a problem they do not understand. Now, once you sort of get the problem, the solution falls right in your lap and the plan of, now, three pieces to the puzzle. Problem, solution, and of action. How many of y'all in this room right now would say, cancer is a problem in our society today? I would. Now, have they ever come up with a 100% solution to cancer? I can tell you they have not. Most people think the researchers don't understand the solution yet, but that's actually not true. Once the researchers identify the problem, guess what probably already exists? A solution. And then they can come up with a treatment plan or a plan of everything that you're going to do in this program or not do. It's going to hinge on how well you understand the problem. Now, Steps are sort of laid out like this. In step one, they give you the problem. In step two, in step two, they're going to give you the solution. And then they're going to tell you to decide which one you want or to stay stuck in this little problem you've been stuck in for years or to start living again. Now, this is yes or no. Yes or no. Do you know what the problem is when it comes to your user? Yes or no? What? Okay, that's a no. Do you? What have you been using? Your favorite thing. When I say favorite, if I put every drug on the man count on that table, alcohol's a drug. The oldest known drug on the face of this earth. And I said, go pick your favorite one and get as much as you can hold. What would you pick? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, that's a toss up between marijuana. And okay, what well, we want. Pick your favorite. Look. Okay, one time. Okay, so pick your favorite one. Give me a bunch of marijuana. Okay. If you had some ganja weed, I know y'all don't call them joints anymore. Y'all fucking call them blunts. If you had a big old blunt, it goes my middle finger. Would you fire that bitch up, take one hit, put it out, go about your business for a month? Come back like the same one up, take a second hit, put it out. Go about your business for another month. And do that every month until all that shit was gone. But what would happen once you get it and you light the first one up? You're going to be like Cheech and Chong, huh? So go up in. All right. What's your favorite? Okay, same question. You had a shitload of it. Could you light you one joint up, one blunt, whatever y'all call it, take one hit, put it out, all about your business for a month? What's your favorite? Same question. I'm going to teach you tone. What's your favorite? What kind? Okay, what brand? If you had a case of taco vodka, would you take the seal off of one bottle, pour you one little drink about like that, put the top back on the bottle, put it in the freezer, because we know it don't freeze, drink that drink, 
go about your business for a month. Come back, take the same bottle, pour you one more little drink about like that, and do that every month until it was gone. Would you do that? What's your favorite? What kind? Which one? You get one pick at the table. Okay, and how are you doing? Favorite what? Okay, if you had 20 Oxycot real ones in your pocket, could you snort one today? Wait a minute, let me finish. We, you could, but your nose ain't that fucked up yet. Could you snort one, walk around with 19 of them in your pocket for a month? Snort a second one. Walk around with 18 of them for another month and do that for 20 months in a row. Well, I know that. The fuck just play along with it. <laughs> now, why can't you do one, maybe two, put the shit down and go about your business? Why can't you do that? Say this. Say, I don't have a damn clue. Because that's the truth. Why can't you? No, say, I, no, I don't, don't have, have a damn clue. Yeah. How many of y'all, when it comes to your years and problems, you have no more of an idea why you keep doing what you do than the people who are watching you kill yourself? People would ask me, judges, ex employers, Ex-wife, why? Why do you keep doing that? And this is what I told him. I don't fucking know. Because that was the truth. I didn't know what the problem was. So what I would do is I would come up with all kinds of cockamamie that never worked. I would try the Nancy Reagan program. I would try to say no. And I would mean it. And I'd try to live in my own skin for a couple of days. And that was more miserable than what I did on the streets. I would try to use different shit, less shit, not get caught. Food, change friends, jobs, relationships, fucking everything. Now, if you're like me, you may not be like me. You may have just ended up here because you was in the wrong place. If you're like me, you have two things going on. Have something physical and you have something mental. Now, here we go. You can't just get the words. You have to get the idea. Now, physically, what they tell me, what we're going to tell you, is you have this thing in your body, we refer to it as an allergy to alcohol. Now, the way you know you got it is every time that you put the first one in, <coughs> this allergy gets kicked off and it produces a physical craving. Your body takes over, and your body starts to tell your mind what to do. Now, what's your favorite? Now, every time you IV the first one, you set that off. How do you know? Because your body starts to break it. When you... Excuse me, I'll tell you because I got really good. Go walk in there and tell one of those checks to come in here. Stay right there. Every time you snort the first one, do you set that off? And does your body start to say, give me some more? Now, the end result, do you end up on one of these right here? Now, how many of y'all, these sprees, okay, get up, get up, go, go, go walk that way. Okay, back up here. She's just walking. 
Back up here. Back up here. Back up here. Back up here. It's amazing when somebody starts walking, y'all break y'all's necks. How many of y'all in here? Yeah, I'm fine. Every time you dump the first one in, how many of y'all physically, your body starts to crave it? Now, once you put the first one in, how many of y'all are going to go and go and go and go like the Energizer Bunny until you run out, pass out, get locked up, or somebody stops you? If you awake, you're conscious, and you've got some of that shit in front of you, how many of y'all will stay on one of these sprees? Now, any of y'all have went on some bad sprees before where you got in legal trouble, financial trouble, work trouble, relation trouble, all the above, and you come up off a bad spree and you sing the Alcoholics National Anthem, which is, I will never do that shit again. Now, how many of y'all have said that? Felt that, felt that. When you say that, I promise you, you mean it. So what you try to do down here for a couple of hours, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, you try to live in your own skin sober, which is more miserable than what happens to you over here. Now, how many of y'all have said, I'm done. I don't want to lose my family. I don't want to lose my freedom. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to lose my fucking dog and my cat and my hamster and all that shit. So, down here sober, how many of y'all start to get irritable as hell? Let me in your own skin. How many of y'all start to get restless? Discontented. So you start a little buildup between your ears. And when the buildup takes hold, they call it an obsession. It overrules everything. Your job, marriage, freedom, kids. And this obsession tells you, you need some damn relief. Now, at that point, you probably do. Now, does the obsession tell you you're fixing to set that bitch back off? Produce that. End up back on the spree. The obsession won't let you see that. The only thing the obsession will let you see is up to this point. Because once you put one in, comes physical in, the obsession goes on vacation. Set off the allergy again. It produces you all better races again. Now, how many of y'all? This has been your MO for years. You start. You go through all of this shit. You come up off the spree. Quit. You build up. You start. You go through all this shit again, you quit. You build up, start, quit, build up, start, quit. Blah, 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 blah. How many of y'all, that's what you do? You start, you quit. You start, you quit. Now, I have not found it necessary to start again in 22 years and a couple of months. So guess what I haven't had to do? Quit. You don't start. You don't have to quit. Now, how many of y'all come in a place like this? And you keep telling yourself and everybody, quit. I can't quit. How many of y'all said that? You can quit. You do not have a quitting problem. Any jackass in the world and quit. I will prove it to you. Did you use today? See? That is the easiest thing for somebody like me to do, is quit. Now, 
how many of y'all can quit? When you run out, pass out, get locked up, what do you do? Quit. Now, how many of y'all can quit? Is that fact or fiction? That is a fact. You could quit. Now, how many times would you say in your using career you've quit? How many times would you say? Thousands of. Is that fact or fiction? Now, how many times have you started? Is that fact or fiction? Now, right now, are you quit? If shit don't start changing, you proving it, girl. You're going to start. When you come in here, we take care of the physical part. We detox you. But if you don't do something to change, you're going to start again. So that's going to make sure you did it. Now, what is the nearest? Dearest thing that you hold on the face of this earth. What is it? Your kids. When this obsession kicks in with you to you, does it overrule your kids? That's pretty powerful to do that to you. Huh? And what's it tell you to do? Put one in. What's the nearest, dearest thing to you? Okay, when this obsession kicks in with you, is it like your kids have never been born? Well, it pushes everything away. Okay, so that's got to be powerful to do that to you. Look, I want you to listen. Here we go. Words and ideas. You can get the words, but not the idea. You got to get the word, and this is what keeps kicking your ass. Not this. If you never put one in, you would never set off. This would become a new fucking point if you didn't have that. Now, how many of y'all have said, done? Done. You're trying to do something humanly impossible. What you're trying to do is remove, and you can't. If you could, the very first time you said, I'm done, you would have been done. The first time it ever caused you any consequences, you never would have picked it back up. Now, how many of y'all in here? Sober, you're miserable. Using after the spray, you are miserable. Now, I've heard people say, I've hit rock bottom. I go, okay, well, what is rock bottom? I went to parish prison. I lost my kid. I lost my job. I lost my wife. I have that, 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 that. Those are bottoms. How many of y'all have hit a bottom and thought you hit rock bottom and your ass fucking dug some more? Rock bottom for somebody like me is when I hit granite. <clears throat> and this is rock bottom for a person like me. I'm miserable before I use, while I'm using, and when I get finished. The shit's not working no more. And I don't have another solution. That's a scary place for somebody like me. Now, how many of y'all, you first started using, it wasn't causing you a lot of problems. And it was fun. Now, they talk about it in the big book. They say that's when it's a luxury. Now, how many of y'all, y'all solution that used to work so well has boomeranged on your ass? And now 
it's a problem. But you don't have another solution. That's when it becomes a necessity. How many of y'all, when you first started using, it was like a luxury? And now it's become necessity. That's when the fun stops. I used to dump massive amounts into my body, and it did absolutely nothing. How many of y'all in here? The fun part has been gone for a long time. How many of y'all is just starting to go? Right? I guarantee if you ask anybody in here, they started out just exactly where you're at. And if they could go back and do it again, which they fucking came, they would have wised up and came here when you did. Now, the problem with somebody like you is to get you to see it now. I know you're too young to remember this. They had a commercial that said, you can pay me now, pay me later, but you're going to pay. If you cannot stay stopped, here we go, words and ideas. Here's some words, but you got to put it with the idea. If you can't stay stopped because of that. And once you start, you can't control how much you're going to use because of that. You are one powerless ass person. I can remember. I started using around 11. I got sober into this program at 39. And I can remember saying, well, you know, if I ever get fucking put on probation and got to go pee in the bottle, I'm fucked. There's no way I'll be able to do that. Now, I never got put on probation until I got sober the moment I turned myself in for some shit. And they put me on probation. I go to the probation officer every month. About eight months into it, all my shit's paid off. He looks at me and he goes, hey, bro, hey, would you fucking please quit coming here? He said, you're wasting my time. He said, all your fines are paid. You pass every drug down. He said, I got fucking idiots out there. I got wait. I got, I said, can you put that in right? He goes, today. Now, why do you think I was able to successfully complete probation early and never fail a drug test? Because that had been removed. How many of y'all y'all go? Man, I, I can't fucking do this. I'm, I'm gonna lose my freedom if I do. I'm telling you, you will lose your freedom. I mean, y'all said, man, I, I mean, my fucking kids need them. Yeah, they, they do. But if you don't do something, they will have to rely on somebody else. I'm telling you, here, here we go. Words and this is what you got to get. This is the crux of the problem. This is what's got you. Like that. Because if you didn't have that, never put that in. You never put that in, that becomes a new point. Now, here we go. Words and if someone has the obsession and they couple it with these two things combined render you. Now, 
I have not put that in. 22 years and some months. Why do you think that is? But why? You're looking at somebody who could never not put the first one in. Now, all of a sudden, don't bother him no more. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? You have to listen. Why do you think that is? You got rid of the mental obsession. You've been here, is this your first fucking day in class? <laughs> See, when you sit here and hear me, it goes, why didn't this even write? When you come in here and listen, it goes in this ear, the shit gets trapped, and it never leaves. I don't know what y'all think y'all were doing here. This is not summer camp. Now, the reason I have not put the first one in is what he said. That's been removed. Now, I still have the allergy. I will have it until the day they put dirt on me. This is what makes Kevin alcoholic. If I take this and this together, that's what makes me. Now, do you have the obsession? So, I, I mean, yeah, I've guessed at certain times in my life. Well, we don't want to guess. That's if you have money and it's in the back of your mind and you have money to spend. I understand that you keep telling yourself, no, no, you know, no. but secretly you are going to go get high. But, but secretly, let's wait on that for you. Okay. Yeah, you still in detox? No, but yeah, kind of. I'm not, I'm not here, no. Okay. But yeah, I was yesterday. How many of y'all you listen to somebody talk and you go, how many of y'all people who care about you, when you start talking, they go, And they don't want to hear nothing you have because it's all bullshit. And not only do they know it, you know it. Now, what are the steps to all of their work? Not in the body, but in the mind. Now, if I told you, if I told you, There's a way we can get this out of your head where you never put one in. What would you say? Huh? Oh, I am. Oh, I'm, fucking, I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to do it. Now, whether you take it, that's on you. What if I told you the same thing? What would you say? What would you say? Don't get too fucking enthusiastic about it now. Look, when I came in to the treatment center where I went, and they explained this to me, I went, mother fucker. That's what's going on with me. And nobody had ever been able to tell me that. Judges couldn't. Probation officers couldn't. Ex-wife couldn't. Kids couldn't. Parents couldn't. What they all kept asking me was, why? Why? I would say, I don't fucking know. Now, I come into a big book, 12 step, big book based treatment center, and they start telling me simple shit, and I go, fucking me. Nobody had ever been able to tell me, they could tell me what was going to happen, something I already <clears throat> fucking knew. I knew it was coming. I knew it was. And in the back of my mind, I would tell myself, yeah, nah, that ain't going to happen. And I knew it was. You have to tell yourself that to live with yourself. 
because you know it's coming. Now, when they tell me, which nobody ever had been able to do, in my mind I went, they have to fucking know what they're talking about. They're not going to tell me the problem and just leave me there. They have to offer me. Now, ever since that was explained to me, the first thing in my little mind, in my little life, that it comes before my daughters, my wife, my family. If I don't put this first, I know what's going to happen to me. I'm going to drift back into. That's going to kick back in. I'm going to put. And I can kiss the girls, wife, the job, the house, the cars, all goodbye. How many of y'all, when I tell y'all, I put the program of Alcoholics Anonymous in front of everything? How many of y'all go, well, I can't believe he does that. Why can't you fucking believe it? You put dope in front of everything else. How many of y'all put dope in front of everything else and slowly but surely you're losing it? If you put AA in front of everything else, you can slowly get it back and keep it. Now, what is the solution? It's only as good as your understanding of how many of y'all have been through treatment with us before? How many of y'all? And we explain this. Now, did you get the words? But did you get the idea? No. Because if you would have, you wouldn't be back in here. I can take a parakeet, stick it on a pedestal right here, and I can teach it how to say middle obsession and physical allergy. Does that mean that fucking parakeet has an obsession and an allergy? It just means it can repeat shit. If you come through here and just get the words, it means you'll be able to repeat shit. You have to come through here and get the words and and if you get the words and the ideas up here, it starts to change. Now, this is the solution that works on this problem. Part of it is centered in what we call the fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous. The other part is the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Now, these two things are distinctly different. The fellowship in Alcoholics Anonymous, I didn't say around it, I said in it. Centers in going to the meeting. And in these meetings, when I first start this little journey, I'm looking for support. Now, after all these years, I still go to, I don't go for support. I go to try to give it. And don't think about me all the time. I know it is Greek to some of y'all. Now, the program of AA is not in the meetings. It's not up on the fucking walls. It's in the first 103 pages of the big book. You know that book I got to tell you to bring to class? The one you don't want nothing to do with. Book. Now, if somebody takes the steps like the book says, they're going to have a personality change. 
up here. They're going to change. Now, I want you to listen to this. Here we go. Words and ideas. This obsession that keeps kicking your ass. Where is it? It's in this box right here. Your personality. Where is it? In the same box. The obsession that keeps telling you to you, your personality, are like Siamese twins. If you leave here with the same personality, you're going to leave with, and you will. And when you come up fire after leaving here, you're going to go. Mother. knew what he was talking about. Now, your personality and the obsession are like now from about 11 to 39. Couldn't get that bitch out of my head far. Nothing. And it almost made me pay the ultimate sacrifice. Now, I come in a big book based treatment center. They get me in the book, taking the damn steps. Because they know if I don't, it is gone. That's what they know. I start taking the steps. A new personality starts coming in. And it starts to push the old one out. When the old personality starts to go, guess what starts to go with it? The obsession. And after a couple of months, a new personality went, boom. Now, every day, taking these steps, 10, 11, and 12, the old personality gets further and further and further and further away. If I quit doing what I'm supposed to do, and I rest on my laurels long enough, that old personality that's light years away, that bitch is going to make two turns. It's going to start coming back slowly, but it's going to start telling me, you, you, you still okay? You got a lot of years under your belt. And I'm going to rest on my laurels, and one day that old personality with the obsession is going to go. Boom! And when it does, I would put, and if I ever put one back in, east, west, Iberville, Orleans, Point Capete, east and west Feliciana, and all parishes around me that are wash the fuck out. It would be horrible. Because the whole time I've been sober, that bitch has been getting bigger and worse. Bigger. Now, what's the solution? Up here, up here. What's the solution? It's going to the fellowship, eating, and doing the steps out of the book. Now, if you think just coming through Woodlake and finishing inpatient treatment removes the obsession, you're going to be sadly mistaken. What removes the obsession is why you're here in the inpatient. If you get going in the steps and do them like now. Let me see your book. Since you ain't gonna use it, you didn't use it the first time. <laughs> the big book. How many of y'all you get one of these books, and the bitch is big, and it's a book. That's why they call it the big book. <laughs> now, the big book, the program 
of Alcoholics Anonymous, the directions for the steps. Here we go. Words and ideas. The program of Alcoholics Anonymous is in the first 103 pages of this book. That's the program. All of this. You know what this is? Huh? It's fucking crap. Now, is it good crap? Yeah, but you know what it is? Crap. That's the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. Now, would you rather do this and change your whole life around and quit worrying about what's fixing to happen or nobody can touch you again? Or would you rather keep working your program? Yours? But ain't mine. <laughs> Believe me, you don't want to work mine. <laughs> look, look, when somebody like me sees they have but two alternatives. They can stay here, do this program, this one. Now, the problem with this one. They have precise, clear-cut direction on how to take the steps. And we know you can't fucking follow precise, clear-cut directions if your life depended on it. Because you know everything. And nobody can tell you ass. Now, you know, my father is 92 years old. If I was him, I would never talk to me again. After what I did to him. Well, we sit around the table today and we'll be drinking coffee and something about my past will come up and we'll laugh about this shit. And then all of a sudden, he will get this serious look on his face and he'll go, yeah, that's when you was a genius. And you knew nobody could tell you. Uh, how many of y'all, some of y'all's parents, should not have nothing to do with you after what you've done to them. You know, the older I get into this program, the smarter he becomes. He used to tell me shit, and I'd go, what, that's so fucking stupid. What is he talking about? If you ever get this, the longer you stay in it, you're going to start to see what people who care about you have been trying to tell you. Now, this right here, this is a recipe to put your life back together in proper order. Now, what's your first name? Let's say Precious made a cheesecake. I got a little cousin named Precious. Let's say Precious made a cheesecake. She bought that bitch up here, and I took a bite of it, which I never fucking would, girl. And I said, that is the best cheesecake I have ever eaten. Give me the recipe. And she sits down, and she writes out a recipe. Precise and clear cut on how to make that cheesecake. And she gives it to me. Now, with my keen intellectual mind that I have, I'm going to make a better cheesecake. <clears throat> now, her first direction set, freeze a cake pan. I'm fucking hungry. I ain't got time for that. So I just get a cake pan. Her second direction says, add three cups of sugar and two eggs. I like shit sweet. I put four cups of sugar in it and one egg. Her third direction says, blend it with a blender for seven minutes. Now, what fucking guy has a blender? <laughs> so I get a spoon and I slop it around for five. Her last direction says, bake it. 
at 350 degrees for 12 minutes. I told you I'm hungry. I'm brawling at 600 degrees for seven minutes. I pull the bitch out and take a bite out of it, and spit it out, and I go, that damn girl, she gave me the wrong recipe. Did she? No. I just couldn't follow it. Huh? Oh, fuck no. Precise. Clear cut direction. Now, they got about three million of us people who used to be here. We followed the recipe and we came out with good cheesecakes. How many of y'all keep coming in here? You keep ending up with burnt cheesecakes. Because you can't or won't follow uh, 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 precise, clear-cut direction. Now, recipe tells you when to add shit to it. How much? How many of y'all have tried this before? But you couldn't follow precise, clear-cut Direction. Now, these directions to you, you first start this journey, are going to sound like Chinese. That's what you're going to think this is written in. You're going to think this is a book of fucking algebra written in Chinese. Now, if you were in school and they handed you a algebra textbook written in Chinese, and they said, if you don't learn it in 28 days, we're going to chop your head off. What would be the chances you could learn it? Huh? Precious? None. Now, if they told you, hey, look, hey, look, we're going to give you this book written in Chinese. It's a book of algebra, and we're going to give you an interpreter who knows Chinese and would you follow that son of a bitch around and never let him out your sight? I know you would. See, you come in here, we've given you a book. And to you, it's a book of algebra written in Chinese. Now, we have given you. Who knows? Chinese. And algebra. And they're going to break this down for you. I don't know about you, but if I was you, I would listen to what he said. Now, the person who brought this message to me, I could not stand him. But he had something I wanted. And when I started to do this, and that new personality started coming in, it's like I heard a pop loud and clear, and it went. You know what that was? My head exited my butthole. <laughs> and I started looking at him completely different. How many of y'all in here? They put you in a place to get you some damn help. And they put good people here to help you. And how many of y'all go? <laughs> and you act like you're about five years old. How many of y'all? This shit's come out sideways with you before while you've been in here. I want you to listen to this. How many of y'all have had some pretty good days here so far? And when you're having a good day, not much of nothing bothers you. But boy, when you in a foul ass mood, the least little thing will set you off. So is it us? Or is it you? you? How many of y'all are so miserable right now? Because we've taken your solution 
away. And you don't have another one, do you? Do you? Look, I get. I look. I know exactly how that feels. Now, I want you to hear we go. Words and I'm an alcoholic. I'm going to get ease and comfort one way or the other. Now, for years, this is how I would get ease and comfort. And it, hurry up, and it worked. Now, after years of it working, that son of a bitch boomeranged on me. And it quit working. But I didn't have another solution. Now, facing massive consequences, if I used again, I kept putting, but I didn't have another solution. Now, here we go. Words and Today, guess what I'm still going to get? I'm still going to get ease and comfort. Now, do I get it by putting the first one in today? No. no. This is how I get ease and comfort today. Step 10, 11, and 12. And when I do those three steps, it's like putting first one in but what 10, 11, and 12 don't set off? I'm going to get ease and one way or the other. Now, how many of y'all, if I told you doing 10, 11, and 12 was like hitting the first one, how many of y'all would say, oh, that's it. Ain't no way. There's no way. Because when I was sitting where you were sitting and they said that to me, I went, there is no fucking way 10, 11, and 12 would give them the same effect a hit of that cream crack I've been smoking would give them. There's no way. How many of y'all, when we tell you that, that this will do the same thing as this, you go, I don't know about that shit. Come on. Come on. I'm in here. Fuck, I did. Huh? I said, hell no. Ain't no way. I know. Fuck. But how would you know? Wouldn't know. I know you Never don't. Fucking try. I know. Now, how many of y'all, the first time you ever had drugs or alcohol in your hand, you never used it. You just had it in your hand. Did you know what it could do? Because you had never done it. Now, did you believe somebody who said, hey, if you put that shit in, change the way you feel? Now, you finally believed them strong enough, huh? You made a decision. You took action. You took it and put it in your body. When you did, you got results. Now, the second time you did it, did you believe them or did you know? Now, have you ever did this? Uh, yes. The fuck you have? I tried. I didn't fucking say try. <laughs> I know you <laughs> have. So you don't <laughs> know. Now, right now, where you're sitting, do you have to know? <laughs> no, you couldn't possibly. You just have to believe, be willing to believe. Now, <laughs> would you believe? Is exactly what you're going to do. Believing is a powerful ass word. How many of y'all know what the power of believing can actually do? It can actually catapult you to success or destroy you from within. Now, this little process right here believe, decide, Action, results, and faith. Those, that process right there, you use it in everything you do. 
You may just not realize it yet. The first thing you have to do in anything is believe it and believe it strong enough where you make a decision. All that decision you take, and then you will get results. I didn't say what kind. I just said results. And what you get results, then you will know. Because that's what faith means, is to know. Now, how many of y'all, whether you realize it or not, you're actually sitting in here because of the way you believe. That's why you're sitting in here. Now, you ever heard of Christopher Columbus? Huh? Yeah. You still teach that shit to go? Did I? Huh? Well, you was there fucking what, last week? <laughs> Do you know who Christopher Columbus is? Yeah. He invented the airplane. <laughs> you know who Columbus is? Oh, that's what they say. Columbus was one of us, an alcoholic. Did y'all know that? Huh? He had to have been. Everybody on the Face of the earth at that time said the world was black. This one little son of a bitch came up and he said, uh uh, it's round. He had to be an alcoholic to believe different than everybody else. Now, Columbus told people, I'm going to go east by sailing west. That's a fucking drunk statement. <laughs> When he landed, he didn't know where he was at. That's a drunk. When he got back, he didn't know where he had been. That's a drunk. But what really made him an alcoholic, a woman financed the whole trip, not once, but twice. <laughs> now, the first time Columbus sailed around the world, did he know the world was round? No. But he believed it strong enough where he made, he took, and he got results. Now, the second time he sailed, did he sail off of faith or belief? Faith. Now, the first time he sailed, he went around town and he hired this special sailor. He was about seven four and he had a wingspan of about nine foot. And he hired him for one reason. When it started getting dark, he put him on the front of the ship with a lantern. And he said, hey, I want you to hold this lantern out as far as you can. And if you see the edge of this son of a bitch, you holler. I'm going to Because the first time he sailed, he did not. He just believed. The second time he sailed, Guess who he didn't bring? That sailor. It was the second time he knew. How many of y'all sit in here? Y'all never did this, but you know it won't work. And you've never done it. You ever did it? You ain't never took them steps. But you don't know, do you? I know, so you don't know. Do you have to know right now? No, because you possibly couldn't. You just have to believe or be willing to believe somebody like. Because I don't believe, I know. And the one that knows is the one that carries this message to the newcomer to help them to believe or be willing to believe. Comments, questions. Look, these steps are so simple. They have to be because they deal with a bunch of mixed up ass people. The steps are so simple. They give you the problem, they give you, and they tell you in step three 
decide which one you want more. Do you want to stay here? Do you want to come here and see this power? Now, if you ain't here to do this, why are you here? Why are you here? If you ain't here to do this, because if you don't do this, you're going to do this. Let me see your book one more time. If you ain't going to do this. How many of y'all, when y'all get this book, it says Alcoholics Anonymous? How many of y'all believe this book is about alcoholism? This book actually has nothing to do with alcoholism. The only reason they talk about alcohol, the alcoholism in the beginning of the book is so you can see where you're really at. And once you see it, that's when they spring the main purpose of the book on you. Now, if somebody asked you, do you know the best-selling book that's ever been put on paper. Huh? No. The Bible. Do you know why? Huh? It's the most spiritual book that's ever been put on paper. You know the second best-selling book that's ever been put on paper? You know why? It's the second most spiritual book that's ever been put on paper. This is the dumbass's version of the bigger, bigger book. <laughs> you know, the one that most of y'all, it went whoop, right over your head. See, God put this on paper for people like me. You may not be like me. It says the same thing. Every, every. Thing out of that bigger, bigger book talks about forgiveness, love, patience, tolerance. Guess what this one talks about? Same shit. Now, when somebody follows the first 103 pages of it precisely, what they start to tap into is power. And when you tap into it, that power does something for you you never could do for yourself, and that is remove the little bit. That's it. All right. Y'all pack up first. Y'all head out. Damn, girl, what you doing all this paper? That's every education paper. Huh? That's every, every education number. We're out the same pretty much just what it is. Okay. Yeah.